In the name of Allah, the one, the conqueror. And may Allah send his prayers and blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, the Imams and the Mahdi's. Allah said, and when the word is fulfilled against them, we shall produce from the earth a beast to face them. He will speak to them for that mankind did not believe with assurance in our signs. They say, why doesn't this Mahdi speak to us in Arabic? The Prophet was an Arab. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was an Arab. But before being an Arab, he is a Muslim. And so he speaks to the Muslims. And you, O oh Arabs, most of you are not Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, had we revealed it to a non-Arab who would then recite it to the deniers in fluent Arabic, still they would not have believed in it. They say, why is he reading off of a paper? If he is a messenger, he must be fluent and eloquent in his speech. Moses was a messenger who was unable to speak fluently and eloquently. And he said in the Quran, O oh my Lord, open for me my chest and ease my task for me and loosen the knot from my tongue that they understand my speech. So what does eloquent speech have to do with the validity of the message or truthfulness of the messenger? Had it been so, then Moses would have been denied because of his speech impediment. They say, why is the Mahdi appearing in the UK with a bunch of foreigners? My forefathers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and Ali alayhi salam and the Imams alayhi salam had already clarified my matter and made it known and your scholars know me better than the right hand. The family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, with the Qa'im from the Arabs are very few. And they said, come to him, even if you must crawl over ice. And ice and snow does not exist very much in the Middle East. And they said, peace be upon them, his companions, the sons of the non-Arabs, teach the Arabs the Quran, how it actually came down. And they said, alayhum salam, nothing remains between the Qa'im and the Arabs except for the sword. Did they want me to appear in the Arab lands so that they could murder me or imprison me as they did to my forefathers? I tell you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and Ali alayhi salam and Fatima, Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and al Hassan and al Hussein alayhum as salam are innocent of you all, except for those who kept their oath and believed in the supremacy of Allah. Through the election of your own rulers and your tolerance of false kings and leaders and man-made laws, and through the rejection of the divinely appointed imams from the family of Muhammad alayhum as salam, and through the rejection of God Almighty's laws, you have strayed far from Islam, from true Christianity, and from true Judaism. And as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, as you shall be, there shall be appointed over you. And as such, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said, 
And as such, we make some of the oppressors rulers over others by that which they earned. And Allah does not change what is with a people until they change what is in their own self. You have oppressors ruling over you because you have been oppressors to Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. You have thieves ruling over you because you have stolen from Muhammad and the family of Muhammad alayhum salam. You have murderers over you because you have murdered Muhammad and the family of Muhammad alayhum salam. And so you are all guilty. All those who elected a man share in the works of that man. Rather, if you only loved one of those false leaders or kings, if you are only pleased with them and didn't even elect them, you are still guilty. The Prophet Muhammad said, if someone is killed in the East and one who lives in the West is pleased with this, then he is a partner in this murder. And I tell you, if someone is elected in the West and you are pleased with it, while in the East you are a partner in all of his work. Most of the rulers in the Middle East are not even Arab, but are Zionist agents of Mossad and puppets of the CIA. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu described them by saying, there will be rulers after me that are not guided by my guidance, nor do they work by my works. Whoever believes them in their lies and helps them in their oppression is not from me and I am not from them. And they shall not come to me at my pond. And whoever did not believe in them in their lies and did not help them in their oppression, those are from me and I am from them and they shall meet me at my pond. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu also said, there shall come a time upon which there are rulers over you that are from the worst of the people. And whoever lives in that time shall not be a corporal, nor be a policeman, nor be a tax collector, nor be responsible over the safe houses. So clearly, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi has made it forbidden that we help any oppressor in the Muslim lands, even if it were by the stroke of a pen. And whoever does so is not from him. The leaders are not just traitors to the Muslims, but they are thieves. They kept you and your children in poverty and ignorance and denied you access to education and social welfare. They stole from the populations that believe in and love the Prophet Muhammad and his family and they gave it to their non-believing friends and relatives and associates and children. They divided the wealth of the Muslims as a cake is divided. The Prophet Muhammad said, anytime you see a poor person in need, then know that someone has taken his share in sustenance. Indeed, those, those appointed over you and the rich people who benefited from these regimes are the criminals responsible for you not having. They stole your sustenance and your share and made you believe that it was theirs. They took what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had allotted for you and claimed it was their sustenance and their portion. They stole and lied and cheated and usurped what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had assigned to you and your children and your neighbor's children. The Muslim only takes his share of this world and his share is his need. Anything above his need belongs to someone else. You need a house and every Muslim is entitled to one, free of charge, in the state of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad there are enough houses to house every single Muslim man, woman, and child, but the oppressors have control of it. Every Muslim is entitled to a vehicle, a mode of transport. But while you pile up in microbuses and walk on foot, some so-called Muslim leaders are spending millions of dollars on car plates, and some families 
own hundreds of vehicles for their own selves. Every Muslim is entitled to equal education and health care and a dignified salary that can feed him and his household and allow them to spend a life getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But instead, they enslave you and they tax you and they treat you harsher than Pharaoh Lanatullah treated the Israelites. By Allah, Nimrod and Pharaoh were more merciful with their people than some of the tyrants ruling over you today. My grandfather, the Prince of the Believers, Ali alayhi salam, when he ruled over you said, I have come to you wearing this shirt of mine. If I leave wearing another, then call me a traitor. These false leaders and rulers of yours came in wearing a shirt and refused to walk out at all while wearing your entire country as if it was their inheritance. The Saudi royal family, the so-called custodians of the grave of my grandfather and the custodians of the house of Allah have an estimated net worth of $1.4 trillion. The Emir of Kuwait and his family have a net worth of $360 billion for them alone. MashaAllah. The royal family of Qatar have a net worth of $1.2 billion. The royal family of Abu Dhabi have a net worth of $150 billion. The royal family of Morocco have a net worth of $8 billion. The royal family of Jordan has a net worth of $750 million. The former president of Egypt, Hosni Mubarak's estimated net worth was $700 billion when he was overthrown, while the entire GDP of Egypt is around $400 billion. And all the leaders of the Muslim nations are the same. I ask you, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is this something that your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu would accept? Are these people blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and favored by him? Is Allah giving them and making you and your neighbors and your children and your townspeople and their children suffer and starve? Are they the blessed ones and you the cursed? By what logic do you think? How do you perceive? The one who is silent when it comes to oppression is a mute devil, and the one who is silent is a partner in crime. Each day, 25,000 people, including more than 10,000 children, die from hunger and related causes. You can save each person dying from hunger by paying a mere dollar a day per person. That's 25,000 lives that could be saved every single day for $25,000. Yet these hypocrite leaders do nothing, but they claim to be the custodians of the Kaaba. The wealth of the Saudi royal family alone could feed 25,000 people a day for 153 years. What good is a Kaaba and a religion of mercy when you let people die and don't treat them as you would want to be treated? What good is a holy sanctuary when the Muslim refugees of the world cannot take refuge in it? Instead, you see the Muslims scattered and battered all over the world, seeking asylum in the lands of the Christians and the atheists. These so-called Muslim rulers are the enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And I'm here to announce that upon them all is the curse of Allah and his messenger. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon King Salman, Muhammad ibn Salman, and all those who support them. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon the king of Bahrain, his government, and all those who support them. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon the government of Comoros and all those who support them. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon the government of Djibouti and all those who support them. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon Abdul Fattah al-Sisi of Egypt, his government, and all those who support him. 
The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon Abdul Latif Rashid and Muhammad al-Sudani and the entire government of Iraq and all those who support them. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad and Ali and Fatima and Al-Hassan and Al-Hussein is upon the King Abdullah of Jordan and all those who support him. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon the government of Kuwait and all those who support it. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon the government of Lebanon and all those who support it. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon Ayatollah Khamenei of Iran and all those who support him. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon the government of Libya, the government of Mauritania, the so-called king of Morocco, the Sultan of Oman, Muhammad Abbas and the government of Palestine, the government of Qatar, the government of Somalia, the government of Sudan, Bashar al-Assad and his government in Syria, the government of Tunisia, the government of the UAE and the government of Yemen and all those who support them. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon them all for ruling without authority. God gave them no authority to rule. These are the enemies of Allah and his messenger and the enemies of the Muslims. These are the reasons for your poverty, ignorance, your suffering, and your torment. These sons of Iblis and Cain, the only ones with authority to rule the lands of Muhammad are those appointed by Muhammad in his will which protects against misguidance. I am telling you, my brothers and sisters, in the Muhammadan state, no Muslim would eat unless all Muslims are eating. No Muslim would have more or less than any other Muslim under the government of Muhammad Not only that, but no Christian, nor Jew, nor no Buddhist, nor Hindu, atheist or agnostic human being living in the lands of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad would have anything less than anyone else. They would enjoy the same rights and same things as all Muslims should and would have in the Muhammadan state. For Muhammad was brought as a mercy to mankind and humanity comes before religion. As for the media and the people out there, let them mock me and let them accuse me. They fear me because I fear no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever fears none but Allah, Allah makes everyone fear them. They fear me because they fear for their filthy material world and they fear the truth. They fear their populations, the people whom they oppress, because they know they are guilty and they fear their uprising. They will mock me and accuse me of being a foreign agent. But as Allah is a witness over you and I, it is not I that is an agent. Rather, it is your leaders whom are all agents and who have sold you out. As for me, I am Abdullah who has nothing except for my yaqeen, my certitude, that if I face the mountains, I can crumble it. And I have nothing but the will from my grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Muhammad, the best of creation, who mentioned me by name and nothing but my flag, which my allegiance is to, and that is the flag of the supremacy of Allah. What can they accuse me of that they haven't accused the prophets and the messengers of? They accused Joseph of adultery. They accused Moses of murder. They accused Jesus of blasphemy. They accused Muhammad of madness. So accuse me of adultery and murder, accuse me of blasphemy and fraud, accuse me of everything that your heart desires. I too, I too accuse the Arab leaders of murdering their own people and fornicating with the enemy and blaspheming against God and his messenger. And I accuse them of treachery to their countries and to their peoples. You sold out your people and your religion and your God. They will say that I am misguided because the Arab leaders will instigate them to issue fatwas against me 
and curse me on the members, on the platforms of my grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They had already cursed Ali ibn Abi Talib salam from the same members of Rasulullah for 70 years. So why does it matter? And what more to expect from the scholars of the end times? People, I advise you with the advice of my father, Imam Ahmad al-Hassan al-Yamani Ask the family of Muhammad about the scholars of the end times before you ask the scholars of the end times about the family of Muhammad The family of Muhammad have said the scholars of the end times are the worst of the scholars under the sky. And they said their jurisprudence are traitors. And they said the scholars of the end times are more dangerous for our ummah than the army of Yazid and in another tradition, more dangerous than the Dajjal. From them emerges the fitna, and to them it returns. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon all of the scholars of Islam without exception. Sunni and Shia, except for those who pledge allegiance to this call and pledge allegiance to the Mahdi. Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam and the Yamani, Ahmad al-Hassan alayhi salam. The curses of Allah and Muhammad and Fatima and Ali and Al Hassan and Al Hussein السلام, be upon Al Sistani, the false silent idol which neither benefits nor harms, Al Khama'ini and all of the Shia Marja'as, the enemies of Allah and His Messenger who call themselves names such as the proof of Islam and the greater signs of Allah. The curses of Allah and Muhammad and Fatima and Ali and Al Hassan and Al Hussein. Be upon all of the Sunni Grand Muftis and all of the Sheikhs who support their institutions. Allah has announced and declared His innocence of you. And now it is for every single Muslim. Every single Muslim must choose to stand with these criminals and face what they face and share in their judgment from Allah or declare their innocence of them and repent and pledge allegiance to Allah and His Messenger while the door is still open. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And when the word is fulfilled against them, we shall produce from the earth a beast to face them. He will speak to them, for that mankind did not believe with assurance in our signs. And I am that beast. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad ala imma wal mahdiyina wa sallam taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ala imma wal mahdiyin wa sallam taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ala imma wal mahdiyin wa sallam taslima. Allahumma